OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network So hi everyone, my name is Marjorie Olivides. Like I said, I'm a project specialist with OTAN. Um, a little bit about me and how this session came to be. Uh, this session is focused more on the equipment and software used in the classroom. Um, that's because my background is actually in live entertainment. I used to do audio and video work at live events, shows and concerts. Um, I was the audio video manager at one of the largest Indian casinos up here in Sacramento, uh, where OTAN is based. So I was in charge of getting speakers and TVs installed throughout the casino and, you know, gathering gathering and ordering equipment, making it all work for a show. Um, I came to the Sacramento County Office of Education uh, as an audio video technician about seven years ago. I joined OTAN about five year, years ago, so I'm not a teacher. I've never been a teacher. Everything I know about education mostly comes from the five years I've been with OTAN. Um, I know that the last decade, even longer than that, has been hard on adult ed, um, but nothing compared to the past two uh, going on three years now. Um, I know that it's been really rough for everybody. Um, when the pandemic started and the state shut down, one of the last things OTAN did like a day or two before we closed our physical office um, was we gathered as many resources as we could on distance learning tools, uh, like video conferencing, desktop sharing, different websites uh, used to get information you know, to or connect with your students or anything that, have, you know, that could have been used to quickly and easily turn a class into distance learning. Um, we took all that and threw a webinar together like the next day with all the information that we had gathered um, just to get it out there. Um, we held office hours three times a week for the first year. So we had so many teachers, you know, coming to us in a panic, like, I don't know what to do. I need help. Um, then everyone started to figure everything out and the tenant started to dwindle. We went from three days a week down to two um, office hours a week. And now it seems like everyone's figured out how to, you know, get everything going. So um, for the most part, we're like on call, <laughs> which is awesome. Just really good to see you guys all grow. Um, but just believe me, you know, I know that everything happens so suddenly and uh, teachers were just thrown into it. So just believe me that when I say that I admire all of you, the way you guys have handled everything, your resilience is just mind blowing to me. Um, the work I do now is like a completely different sort of fulfilling, um, more so than my previous line of work. I mean, it was really cool watching thousands of people, you know, sing and dance and have fun to their favorite band. Um, but it's nothing like the feeling that I get knowing that I'm helping you all in some small way, you know, with um, helping our adult learners succeed in life. <laughs> but um, so basically, I could have sat here and built a presentation uh, using my knowledge and prior experiences to, you know, come up with the perfect audio or video setups in your classroom. But each agency is so different, you know, whether it's the lack of knowledge about equipment and how to get it all set up, uh, the budget, you know, or whatever it may be, anything that I could would have come up with would have just, you know, been theory. Um, what I think would work flawlessly probably wouldn't, not only because of my lack of classroom experience, but because there's so many other scenarios, you know, or situations out there that I wouldn't have imagined, you know. So um, instead, I'd, I decided to go straight to the source and ask some of our adult schools around the state to share their experiences. Uh, so today we're going to hear from some staff at three schools in California here, the challenges that they faced in getting audio video equipment and how they overcame them. Um, so, like I said, we've got a tight schedule here because I want everyone to be able to share. Um, so, like I said, we'll save Q&A for the end. Uh, just feel free to type any questions or comments into the chat. Um, so, how it's going to go is first we'll hear from Eric Danowitz, who's a technology assistant over at Akalanas Adult School, then Melissa Patterson and Elisa Takayuchi from Garden Grove Adult Education, and then Elsa Magana and Fernando Canales from Moreno Valley Adult School. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen, and Eric, if you want to go ahead and take over and get your presentation ready, and while he's doing that, I just want to make sure you all know um, that if you need help in figuring out, you know, what equipment you might need, um, how to set it up or anything of that sort, OTAN is here. I'm here to help. Uh, I can't tell you specifically what to do or what to purchase, but I can at least offer advice and help guide you to the best solution for your agency. All right. So with that, um, looks like Eric's ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and mute myself and take it away, Eric. Hi, uh, so I'm Eric uh, from Akalani's uh, Union High School District. I'm also the principal uh, tech for Akalani's adult education. Uh, so yeah, so when we got locked down in uh, the time of COVID, we had nothing to uh, teach or anything on there. So um, there's a lot of panic, as I'm sure all of you remember. Um, so what we did, and this was also in conjunction with the uh, 
the high school part is that we had to do an assessment of like what we already had. So luckily we had a lot of things already in place just generally in the classrooms. And uh, so all of our classrooms have a, a desktop a teacher workstation. So um, that was a great help. Um, they didn't all have cameras, so we did have to purchase some cameras, which as the COVID crisis went on, it became harder and harder to get cameras. Your $30 camera all of a sudden became a $90 camera. Um, we did have uh, all the, throughout the whole high school district and adult ed, all the classrooms are equipped with audio video. So in our case, we have Xtron, which is sort of like Crestron, which is a push button um, projector system that uh, has HDMI and other inputs on it. Um, all the desktop computers are hooked up to the projectors that way, um, which works out really well. Um, we also are very fortunate we have uh, ethernet in all the classrooms and we do have very good Wi-Fi coverage. Um, when the pandemic started, we didn't quite have a uh, access point in every room, but we did have it sp spaced out pretty well. And throughout the pandemic, we were able to get funding and we got um, access points in every room preparing for whenever we emerged from um, the pandemic. And then the last thing we, that we didn't have at all, and I'm sure a lot of adult schools fell into this thing, was the learning management system, which is actually pretty important. And when you want to do stuff online, you need to have a repository there. And I hope, hope there were other presentations about that. But uh, we happened to choose to go with Canvas because the, uh, the high school end of the district was going to Canvas. And we had a... Uh, very interesting time trying to get ASAP to work with Canvas. Um, we were able to come up with something for the uh, 2020 school year, which was about six months before ASAP got around to kind of getting a solution. But anyways, but uh, so I would recommend like, you know, whatever you're, whatever you're doing or what you want to do, make sure, you know, take an ass assessment of like what you already have. And, you know, it's probably not as dire as you think, because there's, you probably already have a lot of the elements in place. So uh, on the K, uh, on the high school side, in conjunction with the adult ed, we went through uh, various ideas of how to come back hybrid or, you know, remote teaching um, in the state, not so much. I don't think the adult ed got any, but the state side um, gave us funding for like iPads. So the school district decided to go iPads on a stand. And um, I was very adamantly not, I didn't like that idea. Um, there's a couple of reasons why I didn't like that idea. First of all, the microphone on the iPad is great if you're about three feet from it and it sucks if you're anywhere around. And while it seems like a great idea to like move it around to get right next to the student in, in that's just, you're spending all your time moving the thing around and you're not getting any instruction done. Um, you could do, I know when the pandemic started, there was all kinds of people started coming out with all these great camera systems, but you know, like the Logitech rally camera, which I've seen demos of looks phenomenal, but it's four grand. And then that's not even with the setup. Um, and that's great. You know, it would do all the camera angles and stuff. So what we already had when we did an assessment and we decided what we were trying to do, we already had nice desktops. Um, we had the projector stuff. So I already covered that. Um, so that's what we had. We had this. So we weren't too bad. We didn't need to get cameras and stuff. Uh, so what we ended up doing, um, so we tried a bunch of different combinations. And what we ended up doing in our classrooms is we uh, did two cameras. Because I know from... My time, I went to uh, Cal State Hayward, which I guess now is Cal State East Bay. Um, I took a class uh, uh, with a guy who was an expert with uh, Mary Shelley, who's the Frankenstein author. And it was like one of their pilot programs where they had distance learning. They had the Hayward campus, and then the uh, they have a campus out on Ignatia Valley Road in Walnut Creek, I guess Concord area. And they would split, the teacher would split the time there and they'd have a remote thing there. And one of the things I remember from that class is like, you didn't really so much like look at the people 
like you had an idea of like there's other people there you'd have like the people on the screen but it was very important to be able to hear people so when we were designing this i thought it would be good to try to simulate that thing so we had a back camera in the back of the room that gives you an idea of like so you can see the uh instructor presenting on their desktop or whatever if they're a very animated lecturer with lots of hand gestures and stuff you could see that and then we also put a front facing camera on the teacher workstation which is not directly in front of the class it's kind of off to the side to give them the option on that too um so this is kind of what it looks like um and we did get out of uh these are not the greatest monitors but we did set up two monitors so like when you're actually in a zoom uh you can see like right there there's the uh that's the back camera right there and then there's people in the classroom and then the teacher presentation stuff is right there um it seems to work out pretty good um but the most critical thing that i think everybody forgets about is it it really sucks being in, in any type of uh online thing if you can't hear anybody um you know like when we were just starting here there's a couple of people who were like too far away from the microphone or whatever and microphones are very interesting so here's like your standard like rock microphone this uh, sm775 uh so basically there's like a little magnet here that moves back and forth and it picks up in a heart shaped pattern which they call a cardioid and it works great if you're about this far away but as you get further away it gets fainter and fainter but it only picks up kind of in that area so if you're talking to the side of it it's very muted even you could be like right up on it but you can't really it's not going to pick you up very well compared to this it's going to be like substantially different and then you know there's like other microphones you can get like stereo something like this which has two of them so then you get like a, a wide field but you still have the same problem where you, you can't get the sides so they do make microphones that have what they call an omni which is basically it's picking up everything on all around it, but that kind of lacks the definition. You can't really like focus in on the stuff. So this is like, um, this is kind of like another one. It's out of my, I have a kind of a microphone thing. I have lots of microphones, so it's an occupational hazard. So um, there's, there, there's a lot of new microphones out. This one's actually, this is what we went with. As you see, it's a MX, MXL. So this actually has 12 little microphones on here and with some technology, with some DSP technology, it'll actually figure out which of the capsules, the little pickup things that are like smaller than this, that it'll focus in on that and it'll try to bring that out and turn off the other one. So then you get really, it kind of grabs the um, sound source. So our experimenting with this in our classrooms is that we were able to, Put it kind of right in the center of the room actually we kind of let it a little bit closer to the teacher area because it seemed to pick up a little bit better of the teacher which is the main focus but it still gives you the um coverage like if you're remote you still feel you can hear people wherever they are in the classroom you can hear them like you were sort of in the classroom as best you can being remote and this is probably the most expensive thing. This was about 500 bucks. Um, and it, um, yeah, so it like to uh, mount it on the ceiling, um, I went on Thingiverse, which is a 3D printing thing where they have models and I kind of stole, borrowed somebody's model and I tweaked it somewhat and Jerry rigged it so it was able to fit on the ceiling, uh, which works really well. The other thing uh, we did is uh, we had a lot of uh, extra iPads, which um, I'm sure a lot of people have just in general. Um, and you can log in twice on Zoom. You can have like one computer login, one iPad login, and one phone login. So we used a couple of the additional iPads we had around as another camera in case they wanted a, a front facing one or if they wanted one right on the teacher's face. Um, that works pretty well and you don't need to have like the latest greatest it works all the way back to ios 8 which i think when i did this slides here it goes back to ipad air 2s which are like from 2014. um and then we also add a little thing a doseri which is great for like a, a whiteboard it's a thing that runs on the computer thing and you could like 
they cut a virtual whiteboard and then they see kind of like what the slideshow is you see a really fine version of it and the people in the classroom see it too and you could also remote control the computer there and then here's some setups of uh that so there's the back facing camera um the little wiring stuff there is uh, i had to use ethernet usb extension over ethernet and it needs power at the other end so the cable comes down and all the junk's in that box and then it comes back up and then it goes across the ceiling to the microphone which is like i don't know if you see the mouse but it's kind of like right about there that's the microphone in that classroom and uh yeah so the total cost um steve uh gives me an idea of like what he wants to spend he, he likes to save money and i think this came in under a thousand dollars it's a little a little bit of tech work I, I was the only person doing it if you have like two people it probably would have been a lot faster because you can get two ladders going because the, the hardest part was running the ethernet cable across the ceiling it's kind of hard to do if you just have one ladder and then you have to move the ladder um yeah but that's all the stuff we used and uh i guess that's the last slide i guess uh that went quicker than i thought <laughs> uh, all good i just leave some more time for q a <laughs> yeah so uh yeah that's that's what we did we did it on the cheap um you know it would be great if we had the funds to do like a rally cam there's so many vendors coming at us from all directions trying to sell us a, a turnkey system um yeah we just we did we did a lot of experimentation uh i think we spent like three weeks going back um, probably longer than that we had the couple different Thing. We tried out a bunch of stuff and we just came up with this and this works really well. And it also has the future proofing, like moving out of the pandemic. Uh, we're hoping to like, you know, offer it like if a student's sick or something, because I know the old, especially the older adults are a little bit more concerned about, you know, getting a cold or something, especially coming right out of a pandemic. So we're going to hopefully offer the ability for them to kind of remote in and, and see stuff going forward. But yeah, there you go. And uh, yeah, I'm right on time too. Woohoo. Awesome. Thank you, Eric. All right. Thanks. All right. Um, there is a Q&A in the chat. Like I said, we'll get to questions at the end. Um, so Eric, like I said, is um, one of the tech people over at Alkalanis. Um, so thank you for that point of view. And now I'm going to actually hand it over to Melissa Patterson. Um, Melissa, if you want to uh, share your screen. Yes. Um, so now we're going to hear from the admin point of view. And then uh, Elisa will be our teacher. So All right. um, go ahead, Melissa. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. That was um, that was great. Oh, I am at the end of my presentation. Sorry, you get to watch it in reverse. Um, there'll be a quiz at the end if you can remember it all. All right. So I'm here today with my superstar teacher, Elisa Takeuchi, and um, she's going to talk to you really about the, the teacher lens of the equipment, um, but I'm going to share the story. We are um, excited to be celebrating our 50th anniversary here, and we serve over 2,000 adults, but clearly during uh, the closed uh, time period during the early stages of the pandemic when we all went out in March of 2020 until March of 2021, our enrollment had um, dipped significantly. I do want to tell you a little bit historically is Garden Grove is one of the oldest campuses in our district and we actually house the oldest building and I say that because uh, when you're talking about technology, that really adds in some challenges with wiring and electrical outlets and, and different things like that. So uh, in uh, the early, when I started here in uh, August, I, I think of 2020, I was a new director and Elisa convinced me to um, join DLAC3. So if any of you, I'll give a little plug for that too, if you have uh, heard about that through OTAN, I really recommend it. Um, it's um, uh, the technology and the distance learning, uh, really the support with that. And through that, through Dr. Porter's leadership, uh, he had us learn about strength leadership. And I really needed that when I was looking at how am, how am I going to take on this new position in the midst of this closed campus and declining enrollment? So I really looked to my leaders. Elisa happens to be one of those. And we had a think tank. And in 
April, well, I guess it was March of 2021, Garden Grove Unified uh, said, we are gonna mandate that all students come back to campus. And as Eric said, serving older adults, we knew that that probably wasn't gonna work so well for the majority of our population here for a year, they'd been doing this um, somewhat distance learning. And uh, so we put out a student survey and at that time, 60% of our students wanted to Zoom, maybe a little less than 40% wanted to return in person. So, um, in April of 2021, Huntington Beach Adult School invited myself and my counselor to come and participate in a, in a conversation about things that were happening. And uh, we walked in and there was one of these owl cameras sitting on a table and I'd never seen anything like it before. And uh, the Zoom was on and we were able to engage with the people that were on the Zoom. And then we were all safely very, you know, eight feet, 10 feet spaced apart, masked, um, but able to have this conversation and we could hear each other and see each other. And so that made me uh, think about, well, wow, what can we be doing knowing that 60% of our students wanted to continue learning? So I came back and I walked our campus. And as I said, we have one of the oldest campuses. So some of you might uh, remember some of these. We still had smart boards. We had some older model projectors hanging. Most of our teachers had some pretty old desktop computers. Elisa can talk about that and maybe how, how long she, we had those, but none of them had cameras. And early on in uh, the year, I had tried to distribute some laptops to some teachers, but they were, they were still pretty comfortable kind of using the methods that they'd been using. And the other piece of it was where would I find funds? to purchase anything to really sort of bring us up into having a better way to present to those who were choosing to be distance learning and then also to keep uh, the students who were coming in person engaged with those who were learning from a distance. So challenge two was how do I find funds to purchase this? Because in Garden Grove Unified, um, we do not get any of those state dollars. So no ESSER money came to us directly. Uh, we are only able to use the funding that comes to us through our federal funding and through our consortium dollars. So I met with my um, account techs at the district level and started to really dig into the budget. And we found that I had five teachers for a variety of reasons who did not return to our campus. So, uh, and then I had uh, some clerical staff that also for a variety of reasons didn't return to our campus during COVID and campus closures. I had also learned through DLAC different ways to market my program. So I had saved about $30,000 there. And then I, because my teachers had been teaching for over a year off the campus, I didn't really have any extra duty hours. We weren't hosting our typical uh, campus events. We also moved our registration to online. So that cut down on triplicate paper and man hours. And then I had less postage and printing costs because of the way that I was marketing my program. So I began to look at, you know, what can we do? What, what can we purchase? So I have two TOSAs and a, like I said, a Lisa who's an outstanding leader and a couple other teachers who are pretty tech savvy. And they had already been working really hard to help our teachers set up Google Classrooms as a way for everyone to be able to communicate. And like Eric said, at first I started buying some auxiliary cameras and some headphones to put on those desktop computers. And then as I had learned, I had some money that I could begin to purchase. I bought every teacher a new Dell laptop computer. I phased them in over time. My teacher leaders were so great about working with everybody slowly and showing them how um, using the laptops really might be a little bit easier than with that bulky desktop and the additional auxiliary camera. Then, we looked into having those smart boards removed 
new whiteboards had already been ordered under the previous administration, but they were sitting out in, in storage. So we started installing those and I was able to get to purchase 10 interactive projectors with installation. And um, that's still ongoing. Um, we still jokingly say, we know that our cargo ship's gonna be coming in here any day because I actually have two projectors sitting here, but the installation company doesn't have the brackets to install them. Um, we purchased some hubs so that our teachers could be learning how to use the two screens. And then we were able to get some L cameras. My district found them at the time for $850 for me. So that was quite a savings. And then we invested in some new wiring. And uh, our latest purchase was we bought some adjustable work tables for teachers. So if you see in the picture in the top left, uh, that's a new whiteboard, old wiring. So you can see the wires kind of running along there. It's not the worst wiring that you'll see on our campus. And then you can see the L camera sitting there. Also on the bottom left, you can see that. And then moving over to the next screen, you can see the double screen with the original um, hubs that we purchased so that they could have the cameras and uh, show the two different screens, their shared screen or see their Zoom students. And then um, let me move my screen here. So are we excited to say that we got some newer monitors and you can see sort of the progression as we go over to the right. And the top right is that new adjustable table that I purchased for my teachers. So they can move that around the classroom if needed, but set it up separately. The Al cameras allow, allow them to move around. And then the bottom right also shows that. So the last screen that I have for you is really the investment. So Unlike, I know Eric, you did a great job with really coming in on a budget, but I had this one time windfall and I don't have a, an IT person like you at my site. So this was really a way with my uh, teacher leaders learning along the way and really giving us input. So these are the purchases that I made. And um, that's, that's pretty a conservative cost. There were some other incidentals that came along, but I think overall uh, we came in uh, uh, right, uh, uh, probably about $90,000 we invested, but, um, and progressing still, but excited to say our enrollment is up. And uh, really the success is that uh, our, our teachers and student surveys showed that they really are appreciating um, what we're doing for them. So with that, I, I'm gonna turn it over to Elisa and, and I'll stop sharing. All right, thank you, Melissa. Can everybody hear me okay? All right. Yes, we can. Thank you. So, um, you know, like Melissa said, I mean, this has just been an evolving kind of uh, slow roll of all the things that we've kind of learned and have been learning throughout the course of the couple of years. And so I took it back a step um, when we were still um, remote only, we were off campus. And so the, the equipment that I was using at home was I was using my personal laptop with an external monitor and I had headphones with a microphone. And that was perfectly fine for what I needed to do with my Zoom students. So then come April 2021 and we got back into the classroom. Um, I was given a school laptop now. So I, I kept my my personal laptop at home, I brought my school laptop, and they were really great about helping us um, set it all up. What, you know, what did we need? We needed to get our textbooks um, downloaded. We needed to get, um, you know, access to, you know, maybe YouTube's and stuff. Things that were very easy and fluent on my personal computer um, really had to be thought through for our school laptops. And then we really had to work with the um, district IT to help us to navigate some of these systems that we were being blocked from because we are part of the K through 12. So they were very supportive with that as well as um, Melissa being able to advocate for us and using one of our um, IT people to kind of come in and, and set up our, our laptops and things for any of the downloads that we needed to do that we as teachers didn't have access to. So that was kind of a, a 
it was an adjustment because we were so used to using our own personal laptops and no, you know, having no blocks and stuff. So that was a really nice transition for us being supported by our administrators and the ID department. Um, like Melissa said, you know, we, before the pandemic, we were getting, we were on the slow roll of getting new electric uh, electronic whiteboards. And I was very fortunate that I was one of the first classrooms to get that. So when I came back into the classroom, my classroom was already upgraded and set up. So while I was still um, teaching from home, I had these visions of how I wanted my classroom to look when we were starting to invite our students back onto campus. And so basically now I was using my school laptop in addition to the electronic whiteboard and um, a headphones with a microphone. At this time, I didn't have an external monitor. I had left it at home um, because I didn't, I didn't even think I really needed it. But after a week, I really, I realized I did. Okay. So um, I knew that I didn't want to be stuck behind my desk anymore because I wouldn't be able to engage and interact with my in-class students because I needed to stay behind the laptop because that's where the camera was. So being behind the desk, behind a laptop, they wouldn't even be able to see me very well. So I knew that I wanted to move my whole workstation in front of my desk. And so my desk is now in the same place, but um, now my workstation is in front of the class, a little bit off to the side from the front center, and then it's angled toward the middle of the class. Um, I also, um, <laughs> because at the time I was using either a podium or I was using the table, my laptop was too low. So I just stacked a bunch of books on underneath it, just like I'm doing this right now. I have a bunch of books on the table and then my laptop sits up higher so that I can either stand up or sit up on a, on a high stool. And then um, also I was still using the electronic whiteboard and the projector. And then we had to work with um, our custodians and our IT people on the, the hookups because we have the OWL cameras, but we also have the interactive whiteboards. We had to make sure that all of the connections were going to talk with each other and work. And some in some classrooms it did, and in some classrooms it didn't. And it was, it was a kind of a big puzzle for us. Um, some of the things that I would have changed, um, knowing now what I know, um, I instead of my workstation being directly in front of my students, um, I would have changed it to make it more um, at an angle. And, and I do this now and with the with the movable tables, these little portable ones, it's very easy. I could just swing my workstation around any place I, if I need to be closer or, for, or you know more closer to the, the wall outlets, I can easily move my station around. Um, I <laughs> I was using my headphones when I was in the classroom with my students and um, the Zoom students. I was still using my headphones, and I, it didn't occur to me that I should have just gotten an external camera to face the students and some sort of um, microphone or use my computer microphone. So instead, whatever the students in class were saying, I would relay to the Zoom students and vice versa. If a Zoom student gave an answer, I would relay it to my in-class students. And so looking back on it now, I definitely would have changed that part of it, but it didn't even occur to me to do that at the time. Um, and so then once we had students into the classroom, so you can see now my workstation has kind of changed. I'm angled, I'm facing the students that are in class. At the time, I only had four. And then you can see on my external monitor, I have my Zoom students, and that mirrors what's being on, on what's being projected onto the, uh, the electronic whiteboard at the front of the class. So the Zoom, the in-class students can see my Zoom students, but my Zoom students can't see my in-class students. So if I wanted them to kind of engage or just say hello, we would do this kind of in the morning a couple of times a week, I would physically take my laptop and I would flip it around so that the camera was facing the in-class students so that they could all say good morning, how are you, and have a little conversation and stuff because they really did miss that interaction. I think the in-class students at the time felt that they were kind of segregated from the Zoom students because for you know a whole year they were connected by Zoom in this classroom and they had uh, formed a really special bond and now they were separated from that. So the adjustments that I made, um, I was now changing, you know, again, from my school, from my personal laptop to my school laptop. And then I ended up getting rid of my headphones and I ended up starting using earbuds. It was just a little bit more um, I don't know, it just felt a little bit better for me. It wasn't so bulky. And um, and I've, I heard from other people that the, the voice quality was still 
you know, as superior as a headphones. So that worked really well for me. Um, oh, so as you can see in this picture, in uh, my thumbprint, um, then I had turned my camera around so that it's facing the in-class students so that I could take a, a class photo, which I did um, every day. So here is um, my owl, and uh, we were very fortunate that Melissa had the foresight to go ahead and, and purchase these for us. Um, we we didn't know what they were, just like she you know she purchased them be right before our summer break, and so we didn't even realize that she had gotten them, um, and we didn't understand what they were, and so it was a pleasant surprise for some of us, and it was a very scary uh, surprise for other teachers, and she was very good about allowing us to choose. Um, whether we were comfortable enough to it, invest into it and use it in our classrooms and experiment with it. And so you can see mine is on sitting in the middle of the room on the table. And then this is a picture I took uh, of the classroom with another teacher. He has now left the laptop computer where he was you know, forced to be with the camera all the time. And he's now in the middle of the room and standing in front of the electronic whiteboard so that in-class students can see him at the whiteboard and Zoom students can also see him at the whiteboard. So this is a view from um, a student's perspective who's on their phone, on Zoom, on the phone. And you can see now at the top is the banner of the whole classroom. It takes a panoramic view of the whole classroom. And then underneath it splits the classroom, either a single screenshot or a double or a triple, depending on the movement and the sound. Now, those movement and the sound are not... Um, um, direct. It's not instantaneous. It does take a little while, but if you're having a conversation with uh, a student in class, it will start to pan toward that noise, and then it will go ahead and split the screen. So then those Zoom students can see which student is talking, and then also on myself, who I'm also who is also talking with that student. Um, so then you can see me in the top right and the thumbnail, that's me as the Zoom host or you know, the Zoom person, and I'm not sharing um, my screen with anything. So now you can see that it's the flipped version. So this is still the phone. And now I am sharing my screen as the host of the Zoom. I'm sharing my screen. We were practicing EL Civics at the time. And now the thumbprint on the top right is the OWL view. So students needed to learn how to navigate between the two, toggle between the two views so that to focus. So if I'm talking about something that I'm presenting on, then they're going to want that big focus. But if I'm in the front of the class talking, then they're probably going to switch that view so that they can see me talking in front of the class. And that's it for me. I'm going to pass it back over to Marjorie. All right. Thank you, Elisa. Uh, Fernando, if you want to go ahead and share your screen. And I'm just going to say right now while he's doing that, I'm kind of laughing because I'm remembering Elisa was one of those that was always in OTAN office hours. <laughs> what do I plug in? How do I do this? How do I do that? So <laughs> he took great advantage of those, of those office hours. All right. Looks like Fernando and Elsa are ready to go. So thank you, Melissa and Elisa. Thank you so much. And uh, Elsa and Fernando, it's up to you. Hi, good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Elsa Magana. I'm the principal for Marina Valley Community Adult School. Um, I was not here when the pandemic and the school closures were. I was actually assistant principal for two elementary schools. So as I can imagine, my experience with the school closures and distance learning was completely different from what most of you went through at the adult school. I kindly invited Mr. Canales if he would help me because he was here and he's been working with the technology that our principal the principal at that time um, had to purchase. I recently came to Marina Valley Adult School only in January. So I have a little, almost two months of being here. So my experience with this new equipment, um, I haven't played with it a lot. I've seen the teachers use it. Um, it works great. Um, we are able to offer classes that are hybrid. If our student is, um, they, can, they can choose. They can choose to do it either just from home or they can say, I'm gonna come in. Um, on campus. And then if one day they're sick, or like for instance, if a student got diagnosed with COVID, then they would stay home quarantine and they would they were able to take the class from um, their home. They were not coming in, but they were still able to, um, you know, take the class. But Mr. Canales will, is able to, will be able to explain to you exactly what he does um, in the classroom and explain the equipment and everything that they went through to have to purchase in order for us to be able to do that now. 
thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Canales. All right, thank you. So once the pandemic started, um, it was mostly students online, but we had to do was at home, use a computer, use Zoom, share the screen, uh, mostly what everybody was talking about before. And that's what we had to do. It wasn't until recently, like six months ago, that we got this new equipment, which is called a new line True Touch. And it's a picture right here on the right corner. Um, it's basically a computer, a computer and monitor like built together and it has a touch interface. So as you guys can see right here on the camera or on the picture right here on the left corner, if you click on Windows, it's basically a computer. You can type, you have a keyboard, you have a mouse, basically a computer and you can type on it as much as you want. There's also other accessories. For example, it comes with pens, so you can write on the, on the board itself, on the monitor itself. Um, there's a whiteboard option, which is really good to use for students here in class. I usually use that for the map tutoring, show me equations. I can change the picture of the whiteboard. It, it, there's a little different things you can change on it. But I did run into a problem with that, uh, the whiteboard on this computer, and I'll tell you, I'll explain that later um, in more of the slides. There is a camera that is on top of the D line True, True Touch. So this camera is really cool because it follows whoever's speaking. Like for right now, I'm, I'm really close to the computer, so it follows my voice. But let's say if I wanted to move around, it'll follow me all the way over there. If a student over here is talking, it will look at the student right here. It zooms in and out automatically. So that's a really good function about this. So instead of having to adjust your camera, having to move it around or turn the computer around, it does it automatically. So I use this, this computer slash monitor while I'm using Zoom. And the way it works is, for example, so it's the same thing, same function as a computer. Click on Zoom, want to share your screen, students will be able to view it, et cetera. But for example, you put on the screen right here and the students in person can also see it. The students online can also see, see they watch the same screen. And for example, the one thing I came uh, problem across here was that you can make annotations on this computer. But the problem is that students on Zoom weren't able to see these annotations. Uh, people, the students in person were able to see annotations, but students online weren't able to see it. And we, I was trying to figure out why, a lot of teachers couldn't figure it out until we came across, you know what, let's use the Zoom's annotation function to be able to write it. And now students online were able to see any annotations we're making. Students in person were able to see any annotations. And it's really great because, for example, if I'm writing on a document, again, you can use your mouse to be drawing, or we can use this pen that it comes with this device, and it makes it much easier to highlight, circle, run any notes. So it's like, it's a good combination. This computer with Zoom makes it a great combination. Students online, let's say if they wanted to chat, they can hit the chat box. So I, I know most of us know about Zoom, we can chat, but it's also good that students can interact with the other students here as well, because they can see each other. So students in person can see the students online and it builds that like, it's, it doesn't feel this as much as distance. Although they are distance learning. So this is Zoom using the whiteboard, for example. So it solves a problem with, that had the new line whiteboard. For example, we can't see the whiteboard. Um, sorry, students can't see the whiteboard at home, at least a new board, a new, new line. But with Zoom, you're able to see the whiteboard here. So this is a, from what a student's perspective, they'll be able to see right here, I was working on math, working on mean and average. So they can see what I was working on. And this is a, from a student at home. And this is what the perspective of what students will be seeing on the right side, what they would be seeing in person. As you can see here on the right side, you can see a picture of me, taking a picture of the whole class. Students are able to see that. And this is the perspective of what you see from the students seeing. And it's also, this board is really great because again, when it comes to math problems, it's really hard. You can use your mouse to write on the whiteboard, but again, it's much easier with a pen, which is really, really great for math. Because writing like equations, it'll be really time consuming and really hard to do that if you just had your mouse and your keyboard. So this is more, uh, I explained a little bit Google Classroom, how that would work for students on a new line. For example, students here are able to have a book. They have a physical book for the GED, so they're able to use that as study. But in Google Classroom, what I do is, as some of you guys may have already used, I put in a PDF so students can see the actual book as well. So what I would do is I would share a picture of the P or I would share the PDF of the book itself. Students can follow along the pages right here. Students online were able to look at that picture of the PDF, or they could have downloaded a PDF from Google Classroom. So it's really great that this computer, it basically um, interacts with a lot of functions like Google Classroom, Zoom, makes, makes life much easier. And again, anybody can use Google Classroom from anywhere, as long as they have internet connection. 
And again, like for example, classwork right here, if you guys can see an example in this picture, I put the GED book and I divided into different sections. So whatever section they needed, they can just click on it, download it, and whatever they can see, students here with their book, they can see it online as well. And it's also great for them as well because when students go home, they have a PDF version at home. And you can also add assignments and materials and so on. And the last thing, again, this is more like an extra program, uh, an extra program but, which is also beneficial. Uh, not that much about technology. It's plus, Aztec software. It's an extra resource for students, for adult students, uh, for the GED. It's a website they can use anywhere and encourages the students to work independently. And that's about it for us. And another thing I want to add, um, we have Chromebooks. We purchase Chromebooks that we loan out to students. If there's a student that it's not, you know, does not have the equipment on at home. So they'll come in, they'll sign a, a form and then they'll take a Chromebook home so they can have access to that. All right, anything else you wanted to add? I see Fernando went back a couple of slides, so. Sorry, no, uh, I'm gonna pass okay. it off. <laughs> yeah, that's the Chromebook that we have. Oh, okay, got it. can take home if they need to. Got it. All right, well, thank you both of you. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again. Um, I'm gonna open it up to questions now. Um, there's actually, I know that Ashley posted a question in chat a little bit earlier. I'm sorry, Audrey posted a question a little bit earlier. Um, it was when Eric from Akalanis was speaking, says this is the equipment you were using for remote learning during the pandemic, and you're still using it for HyFlex as well. And uh, Mr. France did answer in the chat saying, yes, all items were purchased and installed throughout the closure into our online learning and now in our HyFlex model. Uh, let's see, Chris, uh, what, Eric wrote something in the chat about the extra, Eric, do you want to, uh, yeah, so, talk about um, what you wrote? I, I didn't get to it in the presentation, but the other, um, component that we were concerned about was the interactivity of the remote people. That was actually a big thing on the K on the, I want to say K, but it's, uh, on the high school side too, was the ability to feel like a, re a remote person was actually interacting with the class. And um, when you have a room mic and um, a, a sound system in there, the, the so Zoom software does a really good job of uh, canceling out the echo because that's one problem with having multiple, like if you have two iPads in the same room or something, you get echo because one hears the other and you get a feedback loop. Um, so it actually works really well. Like um, the, we have a couple of classes that use it um, right now that, that a remote person can, like you can keep, they can keep their mic, you know, muted, but when they need to say something, they could chime in and you could totally hear them perfectly over the sound system. And it's like, you know, it's like they're in the classroom. So that's worked out really well. We were trying to future proof it because we don't want to you know, spend a lot of money on something that's not going to get used. And um, it's, it's worked out really well. Um, and it's something we're, I think our biggest problem is like getting the teachers uh, used to using the stuff. And it's, there's a lot of stuff and a lot of them just had not used technology at all. I mean, they were doing thousands of copies of paper. They're very paper oriented, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know that technology has been uh quite difficult for some to learn over the past two years. And like I said earlier, everyone just got thrown into everything. So yeah, totally get it. Thank you, Eric. Um, we've got a couple of comments in the chat now for uh, Mr. Canales here. Um, Christina wants to chat with you more about this. And then uh, David Rosen, Fernando, how much does a new line True Touch cost? And do you find that it has good sound everywhere in the classroom and that the students at home can hear everything? Uh, yes, so it depends on the model. The one we're using is a 759 RS, and that one's roughly around 6,500, 7,000, so it's a little bit expensive, but it works. For example, right here, you can hear me talking. Uh, students can hear me uh, quite nice, but if I was to go all the way in the back, I would have to raise my voice a little bit so people watching can hear me. So as long as you're like within this distance, you should be fine. Again, if you're moving all the way over there, you gotta be raising your voice a little bit. But I haven't had any complaints so far about students not being able to listen to what I'm saying. Yeah, I heard you. I heard you fine when you walked towards the. I still heard you when it went when you went to the back of the classroom. So. 
And if it was to remove the background, you would be able to notice how the camera will start zooming in to the back of the room if that's where the student is sitting. I know with the background, um, with the Zoom background, you were not able to kind of see that, but it does. And like if he was to move right now, you're muted though, Fernando. <laughs> about that, all right. So if I'm going to move around right here, it should register my voice so you can see me right here talking. Well, that's awesome. Thank you. All right, any other questions, anybody? Feel free to come off microphone too. I just wanted everyone muted during the presentation, but you're, you're free to come off mic and ask any questions if you want, so. I have a question. Sure. So when you use our camera, can students see the board clearly what is written on the board? So the answer is yes and no. So it depends on what device they're using on their Zoom, but for the most part, if the when the owl starts to focus on me in front of the whiteboard, the students can see what is on it. But um, I will say though that it's probably they're they're better off just looking at the screen, um, switching to toggling this, this view so that they're looking at the shared screen while I'm writing on it and that would become more clear. There are functions, there is an owl app on the phone where you can actually freeze a certain, you know, I want this view only on this and I can freeze it, but I really haven't played with it that much yet. And, you know, there's just so many things that, that you can, um, they really wanna try to get a lot of little, um, applications and things for you to do, but I haven't explored all of them yet, but that was a good question. Thank you. So I'm sorry, I'm just kind of a bit confused. So you, when you use our camera, you are writing actually on the whiteboard, but at the same time, you are sharing your computer screen uh, with uh, your Zoom students. So they have a separate document they can look at? Yes. So just like, you know, like if you were my one of my students, I would share my screen and you would see my presentation, let's just say. And then while I'm at it, because um, uh, just like how uh, they were talking about um, being able to write on the document and have the in-class students and the Zoom students say, I have to use the Zoom annotation tools to actually write. So uh, like if there's a worksheet or something that's actually I'm sharing screen on, it's a digital copy, I can take my pen and I can actually write in the answers or circle the answers. The students can come up and write on the actual document. So then the in-class students and the Zoom students can see all the annotations at the same time. Uh, okay, so you are not just using the regular wiper, you are using interactive wiper then. Correct. Yeah. Oh, and uh, if I do, and I do, I, I have two regular, you know, non-electronic whiteboards, you know, on the, either side of it. And I do write on that sometimes. And so what happens is that the owl will follow me to the other side and then the students um, can see the writing. Now, again, it's not going to be as clear or as, you know, sharp as it would be on the electronic whiteboard, but it's still, it's still accessible. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Audrey's got a question now. I see your hand raised. Um, has any of the three schools used your equipment in a career training, like hands-on? So we have a pastry chef who, you know, wants their hands to get really close, the students to be able to see how they knead the dough and, and do the decoration. Um, of all that you've shared, would does yours work for the, that type of up-close training online? Um. I'll answer that because I, I did something like that for um, our independent study uh, classroom. So what we did there is, um, again, if you use Zoom, um, you could log in on three different devices. If you log in on an iPad, put it on a mount um, and log in as a teacher, but keep the audio off of it. Um, so there's no audio. So you don't get a feedback loop. Uh, that works fine. Um, we did that for a science class. So that would be, I guess that'd be kind of and kind of like a chef class, I guess. Thank you. I have a question about true touch. Yes. Yeah. So so I, I probably I'm asking the same question. So you're using true touch camera and then it seems like you are not 
it seems like you are not using interactive whiteboard. So does that mean when you write something on the, your whiteboard, can students in a remote online see clearly what's on your whiteboard? Yes, um, if you want, I can show you a demonstration right here. Let me share my screen real quick. I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna share the PowerPoint. Oh, yeah, give me one second. So for example, You should be able to see that. Are you, are you able to see that the marking right there? Yes, we can. Your squiggles. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you want to add a text, you can add a text right there. Um, draw anything like shapes, put it there and so on. Uh, okay. So I'm sorry. Are you using regular, like just a regular whiteboard or are you using the whiteboard in the Zoom? So I'm using the True Touch itself. True touch itself. Okay. Yeah. So the actual, the actual, the monitor. It's actual like a, the, it's a computer. It's a building computer inside, and it's like a whiteboard itself as well. So you can actually uh, write on it. But with this pen, and of course this pen, you can, it doesn't have any ink or anything. It's just something like touch, like an iPad. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you. All right. We have a question in the chat from David to all panelists. Uh, do you record in-class sessions and post them for students who could not attend in person or remotely or who just want to see a demonstration again? If so, how do you record and automatically upload to an LMS? We do record at Marina Valley. Um, if they come, they come. And if they miss it, then they can go to the Google Classroom and get the assignments that they missed. Elsa, I'm sorry, can you repeat yourself? It was a little, the microphone, your microphone was a little bit quiet. Sorry, um, I don't really go. record. None of my, my teachers are recording the session. It's only if they are not able to attend either online or in person, then they just go to the Google Classroom and get the assignments from there. They also go to, um, they use Aztec software for their practice for the GED. And then our ESL classes, they go to, Burlington English, but we don't record the, the sessions. Got it. Elisa or Melissa or, uh, or Eric? Ahead, you... I was going to say in Garden Grove, we are not recording. We're actually looking into um, how we would do that. Uh, we don't want to record with the students in class at this point in time. So we were we were just sort of exploring whether the teachers can be, a, you know, give a lesson and then post it, but not not live interaction in the classroom. Mm -hmm. All right, Eric, no comment on that one, or uh, I, can, since, I can speak to that. Yeah, Mr. Okay. Edco, <laughs> you speak to that. We do not record. It's actually in California. It's a privacy right issue, and we have to get the approval from uh, the student from our uh, students in our classrooms, even though they're adults. They do sign a waiver. We're currently not recording it, uh, but I have had teachers privately record the day's lesson, and then they've posted it to their Canvas page, and then the students have been able to access that separately. Uh, but we're not really touching the privacy issues uh, at this time with the 10 foot pole. So makes sense. I know I have a few teachers who record on Screencastify and they record, you know, the directions and instructions of that specific lesson and then they post it, but it's not a um, actual them teaching in the classroom. All right, well, it's about 3.45. Um, I need to close up the room unless anyone else has any other questions. Uh, I'm going to share my screen one more time just so you guys have my email address. There's my email address. What did I share? Okay, never mind. <laughs> There's my email address, molevitas at otan.us or support at otan.us. If anyone has any more questions, um, feel free to email me and I will get it to whomever panelist you want to hear from. Um, Matthias says, thank you all panelists, very inspiring. I'll, uh, if I can find my chat, let's see, here we go. I'll type my email address in there too. So like I said, if anyone has any questions, email me. If you need help, you know, if you have no clue where to get started or anything like that, if you just need some guidance on, you know, where or how to, you know, get equipment or anything, um, just let me know. I'm here to help. That is my background. Like I said, I'm not a teacher and what you guys do is 
so crazy to me. Just I, I, I can't even imagine everything, you know, that you guys have gone through the, for the past few years. So it's very inspiring to me. And just like I said, that I'm able to help in this small way um, is just fulfilling to me. So if anything, if anything I can help you out with equipment wise, just email me questions for these panelists. Um, yeah, just email me and I will get that to them. So thank you, everybody. Thank you so much.